Let's look at a simple example of flow sensitive point steel analysis. The types are in, uh, have been shown here. This program is type correct. So here, because of this assign, because of the boundary information, we have x, y, z, all of them, and u and v pointing to question mark. Note that w is a scalar. Everything else is a pointer. So w doesn't have a pointy a question mark as a pointy because it's not a pointer. So this is uh, the boundary information that we have. Now. As a consequence of this assignment, the pointies of x, y, and z will be changed. They will not remain question mark anymore. Y will point to V, which will continue to point to question mark. Z will point to U, which will continue to point to question mark. Here Y points to V, Z points to U, and X points to W. So this is the points to information that we get under May points to analysis at the exit of N1 and therefore at the entry of N2 and N3. Now we consider this statement star Z equal to N2. We look at the pointies of Z. Z has a single point here. It means that it's a must points to information. And therefore, we can kill the points to information of u. We can say u does not point to x. Uh, u does not point to question mark anymore. Instead, u will start pointing to point T of w. So therefore, we make u point to w. This is an example of strong update. Why strong update? Because the point T set of u has been updated to include w. But the previous point T of U, which was question mark, has been removed. So therefore, it's a strong update. Now we come to this side. We have an assignment to Z. So the previous point T of Z, which was U here, will be removed. And therefore, we will have Z pointing to V because V happens to be the point T of Y. So we have Z pointing to V. And now at the entry of N4, we take just a union of these two graphs and we get this points to information. What do we get? So we get U points to W along this path. We get U points to question mark along this path and Z points to U along this path from here and Z points to V along this path. So this is an example of flow sensitive may point to analysis. So I have left here a tutorial problem for flow sensitive may points to analysis. I will not describe the answer but the answer is here. I urge you to perform this analysis and make sure that you get the same answer as given in the slides. If not, please do contact your TA or please do contact me. Now we want to talk about uh, the extending the extractor functions to structures. So when we have structures, we want to define what is kill, what is pointy and what is depth. So we assume the following. Pointer X is represented by X dot star. Pointer field F of structure variable X is represented by X dot F. And points to information is of the form X comma F comma y. So which means that the f field of x points to y. That's, that's how the information is. And this is how we had defined the concrete state of points to analysis. This is how we had defined the traces in points to analysis. Now in order to define the extractor functions, we separate the LHS and RHS. Assuming that only legal type correct pointer expressions are used in a statement, the meaning of this becomes clear in the next slide. From LHS, we extract def and kill set as x dot star or a dot f, where x is a pointer variable and a is a structure variable. So here, x is, when x is a pointer variable, we call it x dot star. If a is a structure variable, we call it x dot f. 
uh, a dot f assuming that f is a field of a and it is a pointer from rhs we extract point e as the sets of variables of x sets of variables x so what about the heap data when we talk about structures we also need to talk about heap data so heap can be considered in using these three options note that because we are doing points to analysis we can only consider compile time entities so we have to create some abstraction of heap or summarize heap in some way the first option is to represent all heap locations by a single abstract heap location let's call it h so any heap location dynamically reallocated location is assumed to point to the that particular location or we can represent all heap locations by a particular of a particular type by a single abstract heap location of that type alternatively which is what we use represent all heap locations allocated at a given memory allocation site by a single abstract heap location so if we have x equal to malloc or x equal to mu we will say that the location that is being assigned to x has the name that is derived from the that program statement from that allocation site and in the presence of heap we might have unbounded chain of pointers x arrow f arrow f arrow f so we will want to summarize pointer expressions and this is usually based on the length of the pointer expression so we do something called k limiting saying we'll remember the fields that are of length 2 but not more so let's look at uh, uh, how we can use allocation site based abstraction for points to graph so the memory graph in this case is like this we have x is equal to malloc y is equal to x and then we in a loop we are assigning a new object a new location to y arrow f and are extending the y pointer so y uh, x is the head pointer y is the current pointer that is incremented every time so now this is how the memory looks if the loop were to execute once if the loop were not to, in the beginning of the loop y uh, points to x then y points to x arrow f and then y points to this and y points to this and all these locations are dynamically allocated locations all these are heap locations so allocation side based abstraction says that the location that is created here is called a1 because it is created in statement number 1 and all these locations that are created here are the ones that are created in statement 3 and this is called a2 some second location it could as well have been called a3 but this is the name that is derived from the allocation site so this is the first allocation site and this is the second allocation site so this is a1 and this is a2 so this is allocation site based points to graph so this is a2 this is a2 this is a2 and there is a there is an edge from a2 to a2 on f so we get this particular points to graph note that this a1 represents this allocation site and a2 represents this allocation site and all these points so with this now we are equipped to define extractor functions in the presence of structures and they are pretty much defined along the same lines as they were defined before if the lhs happens to be x star x x dot x arrow f or x dot f and rhs happens to be one of these it is assumed that we have the right combination as far as the types are concerned okay so if x is lhs then what is defined is x dot star what is killed is x dot star if lhs is star of x then what is defined is z dot star assuming x 
x is a pointer x cannot be a, a structure variable because it is star x so we say z dot star for z which is a which is a pointy of x note that if we have uh, z cannot be a structure variable here because we are talking about pointer assignments and not structure assignments what is killed is again similar z dot star except that now we identify z as the pointy of x under bus points to relation if the left hand side is x arrow f then what is being defined is z dot f where z is a pointy of x dot star and here what is scaled is z dot f where z is a pointy of x under must relation if we have x dot f then what is being defined is x comma f and x comma f on the right hand side right hand sides are simple variables because we are only talking about the locations whose addresses are stored so there is no question of a field coming in here when we have and y pointy is just y when we have y this is application to uh, of y to p in so we say pointy all z such that z points to y dot star in p in n in star y we take p in of w and uh, where w is in p in of y when we have y arrow f we do pretty much the same thing we get z such that here except that we have f so we first find out the point of y and then we say for that point w what is being read is the location pointed to by w f w comma f and when we have y dot f as the rhs the pointy set is simply y comma f the pointies of y comma f so this defines extractor functions in the presence of structures in order to conclude this part we now want to look at uh, an example containing a field reference the previous example didn't have field reference so observe that this is the anderson's points to graph and this is the steens gauss points to graph what we get in flow sensitive points to analysis is initially all fields on f point to so x and y are pointers to structures so their f fields are pointing to a uh, a uh, so u and v are structures so their f fields point to question mark x and y are simple pointers so they point to question mark we get this x points to u and y points to v however the f field of u and f field of v continue to point to question mark now after the assignment in statement 2 we say y arrow f y has a single point v and therefore we perform a strong update so therefore this question mark point t is removed instead we update this point t of f field of v to u because x points to u along this path y starts pointing to and of u y points to u because of this assignment so therefore we have this edge y points to v that is being removed and now we get this points to graph we want to compare this points to graph with the andersons points to graph and steens gauss points to graph the first observation is that there is no self loop here andersons points to graph has this self loop which shows why andersons points to analysis is imprecise so this is the information that we get in flow sensitive me points to graph at n4 this is the information that we get the andersons points to graph on the other hand would not have at this point would not have this question mark field because there is no notion of boundary information 
in case of flow insensitive points to analysis all pointy sets are assumed to be empty sets we will instead have v points to w and in the steens gauss points to graph note that this is a different example from the previous example we don't have the field f this is the example this was our first example that we had seen in steens gauss points to analysis because u z has two pointies v and u therefore we get uh, a unification of u and v and we get this therefore an edge from y to u and that is steens gauss points to graph uh, for this particular program please do not confuse between this and the previous program the previous program had y arrow f equal to x this program has star z equal to x okay so with that we come to some tutorial problems that i will leave it for you to do we had this tutorial problem for flow insensitive points to analysis i leave it for you to perform flow sensitive points to analysis using for this particular program there is also this issue of non distributivity of points to analysis i will leave it for you to understand note that here z arrow w is spurious because points to analysis is non distributive here a comma d is missing please try to find out how we are getting non distributivity in points to analysis whether it's must points to analysis or may points to analysis so with that we come to the end of flow sensitive points to analysis and that's all that we would cover in this particular course the rest of the material is not a part 